What we're gonna do right now is review a bunch of the games that I had that were recorded from this weekend's Global Challenge. I played a couple warm games today. I played some games yesterday. These are probably seven or eight of the games that I played for day two. I'm roughly in the 1600s. I'm probably gonna get five or 10 championship points from the event, but I just wanted to like review some of these games, maybe pause, break down some stuff, and just show for those of you guys that especially watched yesterday, how different I play when I don't have to like talk and you know go explain everything and try and make it all like fun content like I make some good plays I make really good plays when I can just like think you know and I'm just like sitting playing myself so uh yeah we're gonna take a look at some of my games and uh hopefully you've been having fun in the global challenge uh this team this I don't know how I feel about this team I don't think I like the iron crown change I think I liked it better as Torkoal I think I've liked it better as iron bundle let me know if you have a suggestion um for that last spot on this team where the iron crown is if there's a Pokemon that you think goes really, really good there on this sort of course, like Chiu, Flutter, Wims, Taraki on Entity, let me know. And uh, we're going to get into this game. Now, I would say Dozo is this team's worst matchup. Dozo is this team's worst matchup. So in this team's worst matchup, in a closed team sheet, best of one situation, you can just actually say, I lose. Like, you can just say, I lose. Uh, but there are a few things that I think you can do to basically force them to win. You force them, basically, when you're in, like, these situations where you should have an auto loss, what you need to do is make a lead option that says, like, hey, you can win. I'll give you a win. Like, if you want to lead correctly, you can have it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and check eight or nine out of your ten leads the best that I can. So if you lead incorrectly and you play incorrectly... I win. Now that being said, remember I said they can have it if they play correctly. If they want to like lead Roaring Moon, set Tailwind, they can really like Roaring Moon Dozo, Tailwind Protect, bring in the Tatsu, win the game. They could lead Dango Dozo. That's too big of a 50 50. I have to either overcommit into the Dango, like lock in a Heat Wave, they switch in the Tatsu, I lose, right? If I double into the Dozo, they protect, make it rain, I lose. So, like, there are things that they can do to win. But if they lead incorrectly and don't capitalize on the fact that they are, they should be the ones dictating play in this situation, that if, if they try and play it a little bit too reactively, I can win. So uh, let's just go into this moment. Now, you see, we're locking in Chi Yu Flutter and then bringing Wimscott Trocken in the back. The idea here is that Chi Yu Flutter is very, very oppressive against a lot of their Mons, right? And so if they don't go big into Dozo early, right, we can then lose a Mon. Um, and then bring out the whims to enable the rest of our mons to succeed uh, with like a tailwind, and then like close a the Trakion, because a Trakion is just pretty good against most of their mons. So we're going on into this right now. And, you know, this is the first game that I started recording today. Dozo Glim. Now that's very reactive, right? Now you could do a lot. You could swap out the Glimora for the Tatsu uh, and just go to town. You know, Dozos do outspeed um, flutters in this situation. But... It's kind of weird. Look how fast I'm locking this in. This is, this is one of the few weeds that I'm like very, very comfortable with. I walked in Ruination into the Glim. I'm ignoring your Dozo because I know that's your win condition. Remember, I already said this is an auto loss for us. Like Dozo, like Dango, Glim, Roaring Moon, that's an auto loss for this team. We need to play to our outs and this is the one out. And I feel a lot more comfortable making these sort of plays when I'm not on stream, but you let them, you ignore them. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Huh? You're gonna, you, you could have swapped in your Tatsu. I'm letting you swap in your Tatsu and win the game. Remember I said like, block, make a block out of things like I don't lose to X, Y, and Z. I'm letting you take the free win. But no, you lose your Glim. You lose it, buddy. Would Glim fit on your team for Crown? No, I think Glim's too reactive. I, I think Glim's a really, really good Mon, but I think it's very reactive. So it's like you can take advantage of the fact that like Glim needs to do stuff. They tried to go protect Mortal Spin that turn. I'm not letting him do that. No, they're, they were obviously making that play. Now we pissed him off. They're bringing in the Tatsu here, right? It's okay. Bring in your Tatsu. The same dang thing's gonna happen, right? The same thing's gonna happen, right? Ruination Ds, bro. And it's crazy how Dozos are so fast now. It's crazy how fast these Dozos are. But yeah, just do the same thing. I was thinking about pivoting, but like, yeah, just Ruination. If these Dozos want to be full, like jolly, like big speed, the Earthquake won't actually KO my Flutter unless it crits. So they're going Terra here. I think they're going Fairy. But yeah, we're just playing to our outs, right? What were they going to do? Bring out like Water Pond there? Bring out like Roaring Moon? Bring out Dango? Like, not really, you know? Because their Dozos protect some cool, then you just double into the Dozo and you'd win the game, right? So, yeah, they basically have to go Tatsu. And uh, all that just because they decided to play a passive turn one. They could have played an aggressive turn one and just won the game. 
And uh, yep, like I said, they go for the big EQ here. They have to be able to crit to get my flutter, um, just because if you want to outspeed it, you sacrifice a lot by losing Adamant and going Jolly. Um, and then Moonblast just comes in hot, and the Dozo, I think, lives here. But remember, like I said, the, um, the Whimsicott on our team, bring out the Whims, set the Tailwind, break the Dozo, you have Tatsu and one other Mon left, and we take those. A game that should have been like a 100% loss. Good luck in our games. Thank you. Yeah. 100% uh, loss. They could have, like, led any other... They could have, like, led Dozo Tatsu and probably won, honestly. Um, and, like, close us with Moon. Scissor would cook on your team. I think it would not because we have NDD, right? We have, like, we have NDD. Um, so we'd be, like, n nerfing our own Scissor, in my opinion. But that's just that's just my thoughts. I bring NDD in almost every game. Um, it, don't bring it in this one because we're playing very hyper-aggressive, doing a very specific things. So in this situation, we don't know what the uh, Tatsu item is. I don't know if it's sashed. I don't know if it's scarfed. I don't know anything about the Tatsu. And so I think, like, honestly, because I have Tailwind up, I can actually just, like, pivot um, out my Flutter and probably close with something else. So, like, I know I can just, like, set Sunny Day, um, and then that, that'll turn off anything really from the um, Ogre Pond for the most part, like if you want to just KO one of my monsters, that's mine. I just bring, bring, bring back in the flutter, lock in D gleam, and then we should be able to be fine. But yeah, there's not that much they can do in this situation. I'm respecting your scarf. I'm respecting your um Yeah, I'm respecting everything. Dango? I think that Dango could work, but we already have like three ground weaknesses, you know? So it's like I don't think Dango do Dango does a lot of what we already have. Like we already don't we don't need Dango to win anymore? Like it's it would be, it would be the same thing as a crown. I think I, I think Dango and crowns are very similar roles. But anyways, we're just going up Sunny Day here. We're going to mitigate these Muddy Waters because I think that was their only option. And even if they hit us uh, on the Trakion, wouldn't have done that much damage. We have Covert Cloak. They can't lower our Trakion's accuracy, so we're fine. And at this point, we kind of just win. We don't even care if we lose the Trakion because all we need to do is break potential Sash on that top room. They already used their Terra. And then, like, Flutter Mage is going to come in and D Gleam out. Remember, the setting the Sunny Day is going to activate our Protosynthesis. Our Flutter Mage set outspeeds the um, Ogre Pond, so we would just melt everything. Rock Slide unfortunately misses, but, like, it is what it is. Uh, Corviknight. I think Corviknight's too reactive. I don't think we need a second setter, right? I think a lot of the things a lot of you guys are going to say are very reactive, and I don't think our team is a reactive team. We have Protect on one one Pokemon, <laughs> you know? So it's like, I don't think we... W so to use something like a Corviknight, you need to be able to like protect with your teammate or pivot with your teammate to mitigate damage and have Corviknight do something like Tailwind or Bulk Up or Iron Defense or even Taunt to create value. And so Corviknight doesn't have the time to create that value if I'm losing a teammate. So if like I get up a Tailwind, but I lose a teammate, all they have to do is like protect pivot, protect. I've wasted the tailwind. I'm still down the teammate. They have four, I have three, I lose, right? Gorian Zapdos, I don't think I'm really weak to uh, Intimidates, but I like the I like the idea. Gorian Zapdos could definitely work. We already have a Trakion, though. Like, I feel that's doing a lot of what Trakion already does. So anyways, we do win this game, right? We do win. Um, and there's not that much they can really do about it, but I felt really good about this game because I did everything I needed to do to win. And I don't think I would have made these right plays if I was streaming. I think the only way I could have made these plays and had the confidence to follow through with them is by playing them off stream. So there is value to playing off stream sometimes. You get those rare dubs. So we're going into another game. And uh, yeah. This guy has a really cool team. I'm going to respect that Hatterene. They're playing like a uh, Bolt Balance with Hat. So kind of more like Bolt Room. But Hat's like just a really, really cool mod. I think more people should splash Hat. Similarly how at the end of like Series 2, you saw people just like splashing Armor Rouge without Indity just because it's a good Pokemon. Um, and we're going to see what the weeds are here. Let me know as well if you guys like these sort of streams where I break down my replays from tournaments and other things like that. Let me know if they help you guys out. So we're going big crown here. And I really like crown as a lead here. I remember they had things like Hatterene. You know, I would love to just tacky on cutter that thing. We're leading like this because I was respecting their ability to lead like in Sin Hat and go Trick Room so they could like enable their bolt to win. So I was actually planning on imprisoning Trick Room with this entity. But now that they led like this, I can just go Terra Ground, pop their in Sin. Lando is a single target mon. They don't usually just go for blind Sancers on the first turn. So we're usually in a pretty good spot there. Yeah, we're just going to go Terra into the Ensign. And if I get this Ensign to half, and I can then do like maybe 10, 15% to Lando, uh, we can just come in with Flutter, D Gleam, we win the game. You know, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And yeah, Ensign can Terra, right? Lando can Terra. But like, 
if I trade Terras with you, that's one thing that my team's actually built to do. So if I trade Terras with you, right, and I make one of your mons waste their Terra on the first turn, you can't defensive Terra away your hat or your bolt to get out of the range of my Flutter main. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm pinning all of your last mons and solving for X for the later part of the game. So I'm going big ground here. And if you're in Sin, it takes like 80% from this. That's absolutely fine. You got rank... Uh, Great Ball 9 yesterday for the first time in Scarlet. Don't usually play VGC, but it felt great when it happens. Yo, that's so that's so sick. That's awesome. I'm proud of you. Like, the time of day you play really does matter when, like, laddering. And, like, right now is a really hard time to ladder because, like, everyone's testing for the GC. So that's awesome. It's sick. So they go Ghost Terror and Sin, which is a very popular in Sin Core right now. Um, I'm happy to see Ghost over Grass, right? Because I do more damage with Earth Power. But um, now what they've just done is opened up a weakness to... Uh, They've just opened up a weakness to Expanding Force. Not a weakness, but a neutrality to Expanding Force. So we come in hot, Earth Power, not doing that much. Looks like a really thick and Sin, but like, Indity doesn't care. You know, we soak this, get a Citrus proc, which is also going to make it so we don't lose our Indity next turn, which kind of sucks. Or lose Indity this turn to like a knockoff, right? Because we used our item. Um, we have a very heavy defense vest Indity. So Indity holds on. I almost wish it went down so we could have brought out Chi Yu and just went Expanding Force Heat Wave. But that being said, I don't mind keeping Indy alive. I'm thinking about it here. I'm like, I could just go follow me, but they're probably protect Lando hitting my Chi Yu or hitting, sorry, hitting the Indy spot. Um, so at this point, I'm thinking like, if you're just going to protect on like knockoff or Flare Blitz at Indy slot, you know, dark and fire attacks, I'm just going to pivot out my Indy for my um, Chi Yu and then go for an expanding force, which at this point, because I have the Psy Terrain boost, I'd be able to kill your Lando in case you don't protect and do significant damage during Sim, put it within that range for that Dazzling Gloom I was talking about. And even if you did something crazy to my Iron Crown, like Chi Yu's still on the board. And vice versa, if you did something to the Chi Yu, you're not checking the Iron Crown, which is staring down your face, right? So Expanding Force comes in here, big damage, Beads of Ruin Shred on the board. Look at that, Lando O-Code. Nice, dude, it's almost like a play of the game. See, this is what I mean. Um, we we're talking about like, what mons to add to the team. Um, people are talking about like Corv and like mitigating damage, mitigating this, mitigating that. Like we're winning the game in two turns, right? That's how this team works. You can parting shot. Don't really care, right? I don't really care about parting or like go, go nuts, you know? And we get to keep the entity. Like we just didn't lose entity. We have a redirector. We can re-terrain later on in the game. Really, really good stuff. Um, and then the Chi hasn't locked into anything. And we basically just win. Remember they use their Terra. Right? So what's this Ogre Pond going to do? <laughs> like, what does it think that it does? You know, you can bring your Insim back out. You can bring your Bolt out. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So at this point, they bring the Bolt out. But remember we have, remember the whole point was like, I need to do like that 30-ish percent so Flutter can just come in and solve for X, right? So I'm thinking like, what do I really need to lock into? And I'm looking at it, I'm like, Ruination is the play. Ruination, again, is the play. Um... It's just such a good move. Maybe I'm tilted for missing all my heat waves. And I, I don't ever really miss Ruination, but I think Ruination's so good here. Look at that. Big damage. Big, big, big damage. I'm allowing you to go for a Horn Leech into my Iron Crown or an Ivy Cudgel into my Chi Yu. It does not matter. The fact that the Ivy Cudgel is actually probably better. But even if they did, like, Horn Leech me, um, I would have just kind of brought out Flutter and then went for a Ruination into your Ogre Pawn and then popped right there. The reason why I didn't target Ogre Pond on the first turn as well is because I didn't want to get Horn Leached all the way back up to full. I don't think I could have KO'd it. Also, it could have like protected. I'd rather just stick the damage on Bolt because Flutter just solves Rex. All their mons are way too low to deal with this. Remember, they have an Insin as well, but it just can't break a Flutter. So Flutter kind of nice. Flutter kind of busted. And uh, yeah, dude, just, we take those all the way to the bank. Like, the, that's Pokemon, man. So it's like, they're, they're don't, you don't need defensive tools. They go for Thunderclap, doesn't do anything, you know? They tried. Right? <laughs> and we take those wins. All right. All right, all right. And they have an incident in the back, but, you know, it's fine. It's fine. So you can see how the team kind of plays. Like, I don't think I need Crown to be to play this way. I could have done that same type of lead just with more Chi Yu. I could have just led Flutter the whole time and gotten away with that, I think. Because I never really let them hit the Iron Crown. So that's just another thing. Like, I don't think I need Iron Crown to have, like, that big AoE damage. I think my Flutter... It's basically, like, a second Flutter that has a better Shen Pao matchup. That's how I'm looking at Crown, because we have the Tachyon Cutter. And I do like the Iron Crown with the Tachyon Cutter to be able to Oko Shen Pao and Flutters. But at the same time, like... I don't think it's needed. I'd rather have a different win condition altogether. That's why I'm thinking I might go back to like the Torkoal or the Bundle. I really thought those were really, really good mons. And so, like I said, we take those wins. Not that much they could do about it. 
So here is, you can see they have Shen Pao, Flutter. There's two matchups that are pretty good for Iron Crown. They also have Ape, right? I've seen a lot more Ape recently. I think Ape's really good. Um, but I don't think that I'm that scared of this team because they also have big Torn Ursh. And I think we have a really, really good matchup into Torn Ursh with this team. I can go things like Iron Crown, um, Indity, like follow me, Expanding Force. Basically, you're forcing a Terra. Otherwise, they're going to lose their Urshi on the first turn. Because they can also like Tailwind and U-Turn out, but like I don't, I don't care because you're going to take way too much damage on whatever comes in and your Torn. You're in a really, really bad spot here. You have to Trastalize your Urshi or set Tailwind. You can't do everything, right? Is this pre-recorded? No, I'm talking right now. I mean, the, the games we're watching are recorded, but I'm talking over them. I'm basically analyzing why like I've made the moves that I did. So like I said, I really like this core. Um, I want to talk about it. Um, we're going to take a look at it. One right, right. When you, when you see all four mons right there. So what I really like about this play is it it's a good example of your opponent can't do everything. My Iron Crown outspeeds their Urshi by one point, even if they're Scarfed. They saw that I was booster speed. I have a 98 base speed. They have a 97. So if I click Expanding Force, you will lose your Urshi and you will lose more than half the health on your Torn. Now you can get around that by using your Terra, right? To go like Steel Terra or Water Terra, you won't get KO'd. Um, and then, you know, you can Rain Dance, make sure you take out my Entity. You can Tailwind to make sure you actually hit first. So you can Tailwind and then you turn, but then whatever you come in, with would take like really, really big damage from the expanding force. I'm, I'm going to guarantee stick damage on your torn because you have to use Tailwind to get your Urshi out of dodge. The only safe play they could do is like protect Urshi, pivot in Shen Pao, but then that board doesn't do anything either because I just redirect and Tachyon Cutter, right? So I'm in a really, really good spot. They can't set Tailwind. They can't set Rain Dance. They can't click Bleak Wind and not lose a massive resource. So let's just go into it. They are going to go with the Terra option, which is fine. Like, remember, the whole point of this team is to make them waste those resources early. Sometimes you see people go Steel Terra Torn 2, but they go Water Terra. It's absolutely fine. And the whole idea here for me is I can just, like, redirect my Entity and then bring out my Flutter. Or sorry, bring out, bring out my Whims. And then we trade Tailwinds, but I'm still faster than you. And if you bring out, like, a Shen Pao, I have Tachyon Cutter. There's terrain on the board. We're fine. So they're going for the Rain Dance option, um, which is good. I think Rain Dance option is fine. Do not care about Rain Dance option. So big E-Force, massive damage. Look at that. And Surging Strikes. And you just let them have it. Let them have the Entity. I have a Citrus Berry, but they still get it. And I'm assuming that they're Scarfed, right? I'm assuming they're Scarfed. It looks like Adamant Scarf based off the Rain Dance steroid. And uh, I think they needed a high roll one of these. I think I've calc this. Um, it's not always a KO, but it doesn't matter. Um, we take the L on the Entity anyways. All we need to do is bring out Entity, we trade Tailwinds, and I still maintain that one point faster speed. Right, so there's the, uh, sorry, I meant bring out uh, Whimsicott. Right, but what do they do about it, you know? This is what I was talking about. They're, you don't really need the defensive tools. You need that, like, Entity already has enough defensive tools to set me up for the trades that I want. So we just click Expanding Force. Now, I'm giving them the option to pivot in Shampao, because what they can't do is not lose a Mon, set Tailwind, right? So if they want to set Tailwind, they're going to give me their Torn. Right? And they could pivot in the Shen Pao, but then what happens is like, if you pivot out Urshi for Shen Pao and Tailwind and lose your Torn, and then bring out your Urshi, well, I still got my Tailwind up, and then I still check your Shen Pao, right? Like, Crown's not going anywhere. You're not threatening Crown by doing this. And then if you bring your Urshi back out, I threaten the Urshi with the whims, and then I still have the Flutter in the back, right? I haven't even used Terra yet, right? So we're just trading Tailwinds here. It's absolutely fine. Ain't no problem. And Expanding Force is going to KO that uh, Tornadus. And I could have, like, read this and went for, like, just the Tachyon Cutter. It would have definitely taken out the Urshi from there, too. Didn't need to do that. I don't think I needed to. I'd rather get the Torn off the board because Torn's a bit of an enigma. Um, just don't like dealing with it. Because, like, they're more incentivized to go for, like, Protect Shen Pao, Bleak Wind, things like that. If they Or Protect them on, like, Bleak Wind or something like that and get Speed Drops. Don't even want that. I'd rather just continue my trades. Um, so, yep, Moonblast here. This was a weird turn. So I was thinking, like, if you protect your Shen Pao here and hit my crown, I'm not the happiest guy, um, but they don't. So we take those. Tachyon Cutter, they thought they were safe with their uh, Sasharino. Not today. And I could have went Expanding Force Moonblast if I wanted to guarantee, like, trade with them, but I don't think I needed to. I, I, in like, hindsight, that might have been a slightly better play because they're still getting my crown, but it doesn't really matter because we still have a whole extra Mon in the back, right? So I think the Mon they have here is Flutter. I, I think I might have been able to play that turn a little bit cleaner by doing that Expanding Force play, but like, I still think, like I said, I'm fine. 
So we basically trade crown one for two. And uh, yep, and then I think we both have flutter, but I still have Terra and a full health sash whims. So like, I feel like I'm in just like a really, really good spot here. There we go. How's it going? It's going good. It's going good. Bam. Big flutter energy. There we go. And so like they can they can lock into whatever they want. You see they're not booster. So uh, I was thinking like, this is a weird situation. Like I was like, I, I should moon blast. And, like I could shout about super effective. And I'm thinking like, what is their item? You know? And I was like, I don't want to fight the ghost berry reduced flutter. Moon blast is fine. You know, don't like friends don't let friends let themselves lose to damage reduction berry ghost flutters. <laughs> It's like a Kasib berry. Oh my gosh. So yeah, I just lock in the moon blast and we just double moon blast. I think they are faster than me. Um, but even if they like crit the shadow ball, I still think I would win, honestly. Because I think I would I would have three shot I would have three moon blasts with my my whims. So I would probably be fine. Or at least two. But you can see it doesn't matter. Even a crit there probably wouldn't have uh, KO'd me. Look at that damage. That's a that's a that's a three shot. That moon blast comes in hot, and uh, we take those wins. So so far, uh, today, day two is going a lot better. And, uh, yeah, day two is going a lot better than day one did. I've used, I'm using a lot less heat waves. I'm using a lot less heat waves today. So that's why it's doing better. I'm using a lot more ruination. And so we're going into this next game. And uh, I will tell you that I think this is Peter Pantru because I, uh, yeah, that's the name, right? Um, but really, really cool team. I think that team also did well at Vancouver. I know someone did well with Iron Moth. Um, and this is just a really hard matchup. Like Rilla bolt balance is not a great matchup and it's very skill based. Basically it's going to be terrain wars between my entity and their Rillaboom. And it's just really, really hard to maintain that terrain. It basically also says like, I can't utilize iron crown the way I would like to. I need to go a little bit more into like whimsicott Tarakion stuff. And that's also just really really hard to play against it really puts a lot of emphasis on like their flutter main in the matchup and so i'm treating i think this guy's pretty high ranked at this point so i'm treating them like they're a good player i'm giving them the respect that they need to get in this matchup and they lead with urshi flutter and we're gonna see booster flutter so like they're basically trying to set up a ton of pins they have like fake out it's not fake out sorry they have like icy wind over me they have close combats they have like a lot of value right here so like in this situation i'm very pinned um i can go like i could go like tailwind rock slide and try and get a flinch and break the urshi sash but that doesn't like win me the game they're good enough here to like pivot in their rilla you know um, grassy glide, pin the Taraki on, um, protect, weave it out, you know, wait, out, once you wait out the tail in there, especially if I'm a Mon down, like I would lose the game. Even if like I, if I want like rock side, didn't get any flinches and you killed my Taraki on, and then I have like whims, NDD and flutter, I no longer have the four Mons required to correctly cycle out my terrain over and over and over again while still keeping up aggressive pressure. So you need to keep all four Mons. So, like I need to go into this a little bit differently than I would want to go in. I can't trade. I can't trade. Right, so I need to go into it a little bit differently. So we're pivoting our entity, getting our terrain up just a little bit quicker. We know we're probably going to soak the close combat. And I think the way to win this game is actually due to a delayed Tailwind. I think the delayed Tailwind will give me a lot more value. There's the Icy Wind like we're talking about. And uh, I think they're going to close combat me as well. And I'm trying my best to just steal the Urshi because I don't know if they're sashed, right? They're close combat the entity. Cool. We're EV trying to live that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, they get the stat drop. And I think they are Sash Urshi. I go for a, a Moon Blast here. Um, and so I haven't lost them on. They haven't lost them on. But now I have a really cool board state where I can go like Tailwind D Gleam if I wanted to and threaten their Urshi, which means it should be pivoting. Should be pivoting. Um, they also have the option to like pivot out Flutter if they wanted to. Um, in this situation for me, I'm looking at like what I want to do. I'm going to go for the fade away Tailwind and then I pivot back in my Tarakion to potentially get that justified boost. So you can see I'm dipping a little bit more into my bag of tricks than I would be in like a trade situation. Because um, again, you can't really trade with this. You have to like do a lot of switches. Like right now what I'm trying to do is bait that Rilla into coming onto the board because I need to then be able to like lose my Whimsis turn and then rebring out my... Um, my flutter or my entity to regain terrain control. So Taraki on the uh, treasure hunter comes in hot over here. There's the tailwind, right? So we needed that tailwind. Didn't need to do it last turn. This is a good turn to do it. Gives me the optimal amount of time on it. They go for the big moon blast into my whims. They take out the whims and then 
They could have just close combat of that entity, like easy peasy, but you know they always click that wicked blow. So we're gonna get a justified proc. Cause you see how greedy this is too? This is like super greedy. Um, and it's still a lot of damage, even though it's resisted. Um, but Trakion's gonna get a justified proc. Now I'm a plus one, and they don't know my spreads, right? How fast is entity? We're speed reduced zero speed. So we actually could not have undersped. We sorry, we could not have outsped the uh the flutter. Like they could they could have also just icy winded us, you know? But I, I don't want to leave the entity on the board, because if you lose the entity, you can't terrain trade with them. I'm surprised I brought crown of this, actually. I shouldn't have. Um, but it's okay. I'm surprised I brought crown. I should have brought flutter. Um, now, I, I think the, the Iron Moth disincentivized my Flutter and my Chiyu. It's a really, really good pick here. But yeah, I don't think that you want to like ever let the Entity get O-Code. And I think I'm making a really good play in this situation here. Now, I, I haven't got like a... Am I Swords Dance in this turn? I don't know. I didn't see what I locked in. But like, I know you have to take these like chances um, on, their, on their passive turns. So they pivot out the Urshi. It's sashed. And uh, what's coming in here? I think they pivot in um, Rillaboom here, right? Yeah, there's no reason to go for, like, the uh, the rock side there. And I think the Flutter just protects, right? Yep. And I think I was tacky on Cuttering and Swords Dancing, right? I think that's what I did. Dude, I'm so good if that's what I did. Nah, dang. Dude, I should have I should have been more of a champion. I should have been more of a champion, dude. Because I still pretend, I still think I checked that Flutter. Um, but I don't. And so I'm looking at this. I could pivot out my Rilla and Expanding Force, um, but they outspeed me. And I could like protect my Crown um, and Trastalize my Tarakion. There's so many different things I could do here. I'm still thinking I, I KO this Flutter with the, ta with the Tachyon Cutter. And I think I just decide to pull the trigger this turn. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with this, but imagine if I had a Swords Dance last turn. That would have been sick. So remember, my Tarakion can't get Fake outed because I'm Cover Cloaked. They don't know that. And... I just want to be able to not get o code by um, or Grassy Glide, right? Just trying to not die to Grassy Glide or Wood Hammer, either or, right? So they're protecting the Florida Mains on cooldown. I go for the Tack and Cutter, and it doesn't KO, which means they're, like, very, very thick. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, I really thought that I would get that. I also really thought that I was going to get that at plus one. And so you see, like, not picking up those two KOs. Oh, that hurts so bad not getting those KOs. Very bad. Because now my Trakion's within range for a Moonblast, right? And they would hammer me. Like, I'm in range probably for a Grassy Glide right here, too. So I'm in a real pickle this turn. Um, they, they do get KO'd there, so I am able to utilize my Entity correctly for the re remainder of this game. But, like, ah. Uh... And they're going to bring out Urshi, right? Which, like, threatens both my Mons. And, like, you see how, like, ah. Uh... It's just not, it's not, it's not great. It's not a good spice to be in. But the real boom is down, which means I can actually utilize, like, Entity. I'm trying to remember what they do bring out here. I don't remember if it's Urshi yet. Um, I don't think it is Urshi yet. Actually, no, it's Urshi. It's Urshi. I remember what they closed with. They closed with something a little bit different. Um, but yeah, over either way, like, I didn't get any KOs last turn, and I made it really, really hard. So Urshi's on deck here. And this is, like, a weird turn. Last turn of my Tailwind. So I'm reading Heavy Protects. I'm like... You, my friend, are the biggest protectorino. So, like, I'm going to try my best to seal up your flutter. I'm going to ignore your Urshi, because I know you're double protecting. But if on the off chance, like, your flutter didn't, and you wanted to, like, weave in an icy wind or something, I'm going to respect that. I'm also thinking you might just sucker punch my Taraki on here. I'm thinking they might just go, like, icy wind sucker punch or something like that. They're just going for the standard double protect. I clicked the swords dance, bro. I did it. I clicked that swords dance. Now, what I think is really weird about this board state that they're going into here is, like, if I wanted to swap out my Tarakion for Entity here and just, like, go for that same play, I think I would have won this game. I'm going to lose this game, by the way. Because, um, like, I would just been able to redirect away anything. Uh, I can just redirect everything away. Uh, I can redirect away, like, any big damage from the Flutter. I outspeed the Urshi, right? So, and your Protects are both on cooldown. So I don't know why they did that play. Like, yeah, you're waiting out my Tailwind, but, like, even if you Icy Wind, you don't KO my Crown here. And so, like, I'm looking at what I should be doing here. I'm still threatened by Sucker Punch on this Trakion, and I'm like, fuck, I don't, I didn't think, I didn't think they would go Double Protect. Um, anyways, so I'm, like, big pinned here. And so I'm going to go for a Protect on my Trakion, which is never recommended in front of Urshifu, but I'm trying to make it so, like, maybe they're going to... I'm thinking if I get one more ticket Grassy Terrain, 
uh, crown can go down this turn. And then I will be able to utilize my Indidi and then just hopefully like plus three Tarakion can rock side out to win because I do outspeed the Urshi. They're wicked blowing here. Never lucky. I think it's the second, uh, was that the first or second I, uh, time I got hit by Icy Wind? I don't remember. Either way, you know, sucks to suck. Losing the uh, Iron Crown there. I didn't get anything for it. And then, like I said, I have the Entity here. So I could have pivoted in that Entity on their Double Protect turn and probably just won the game. But now I have also restored enough health to make it so Icy Wind won't kill my Tarakion, which is nice. Um, and we all remember we can't get Speed Dropped on Tarakion because we have um, Covert Cloak. Right, so I'm thinking, like, if they have, like, Iron Moth, if they have, like, even Lando, like, I can be in a good spot here. So I'm thinking, like, I could just Rock Slide. If I double hit this Rock Slide, I lose the Entity to the Flutter every time. Um, but it is what it is. You know, I think I think we do. We have in some shots. We just got to get some hits, got to get some crits, maybe got to get some flinches. Um, but it's definitely, like, possible to win in this situation. Um, considering, you know, that one turn where I basically blew my load on the Tachyon Cutter and the Sacred Sword, the plus one Sacred Sword, and didn't get anything for it, um, that was a not good turn. So, they're going Big Terra, I think this is on the Flutter main, um, and they're going Fairy Terra to make sure that they pick up the KO on our Indity, um, which is a good play. Like, imagine if, like, they just went for, like, a Moonblast, and, like, they don't know my EV spread, really. So, if they did all that and they didn't KO the Indity, that would be not great. And I also really like that they're going Detect Urshfu here. They're doing this to make sure that my Rock Slides are AoE for as long as possible. So they know they're losing the Flutter. They're basically trading Flutter. They're probably targeting Tarakion. I wouldn't be surprised. But like they're basically just getting the Entity off the board. And then they have a 2v1 versus my Tarakion. And I'm thinking like what they have in the back. Like I don't know their Moth EV spread. Um, I might outspeed it. Tarakion has a relatively high base speed. I outspeed something like Lando. So we take out the Flutter here. I'm basically one flinch and or crit away from winning the game. And yeah, the, the right play for them there was to detect because now I'm doing double, uh, I'm doing double target with this rock slide. But if it was single target at plus three, I know I could have okoed their Lando, which is what they have here. So yeah, it comes into Lando, right? There's the boy. Um, and honestly, like at this point, um, they just attack with two mons and I'm like, well, just got a rock slide out. Hopefully I hit my rock slides and, uh, there's the rock slides. Big damage. Definitely would have killed land if it was single target. So if they would have lost that Urshifu, they would have lost the game, uh, last turn. And I just don't get the flinch. So we take the L, but close. I think that was really close. Like considering, you know, I probably should have lost that game a lot earlier, I'm, I'm very pleased with this L because I think I did a lot of things right. I got a lot of... Anytime I can get those sword stances in mid-game, I think I'm doing stuff right. So I take the L. We go up into this next game. Going up against like Ogre Pawn. Uh, again, more Rilla like Bolt balance. This person has the same like Flutter Urshi. So it's basically like a second crack at like the same team. This is like the meta team right now. This like heavy aggro Bolt balance team with like a bunch of Grassy Glide spams from like Ogre Pawns. This one is in Sin as well. So very, very standard stuff. But uh, I think this person was like 16, 15, and I'm still in the 1500s when I'm playing this game. So I'm like, whoa, this person has all the points. And so they lead Flutter and Ogre Pond. And I'm looking at this board and I'm thinking like, what should I do here, right? What should I do? Should I go protect Tarakion and like Tailwind and just potentially lose my whims and then bring out something that pins with like Rock Slide and, you know, other AOE like, like my Chi Yu or my Flutter? Or should I just go like Tailwind attack you get one of my mons, but then I bring out like my Chi Yu and I just click like Sunny Day Heat Wave win the game, right? There's so many options here. Um, I do not mind just going all in on trades in this situation. And I'm really thinking about it. I'm really, I'm thinking about it. Do, do I do that? I should, I should just attack. This is definitely just an attack turn. Like there's no way that playing passive is the right play here. Yep, you just, you just start trading, right? It's gonna cost me my Terra early, but if I were to protect and go Tailwind and you just nuke my whims, I can never actually set my Protosynthesis that I personally do want, right? I don't think in this game I'm trying to go into as much of a terrain war as I was in the last one. So in this one, I'm just basically trying to roll their leads and then once those mons, well, I'm trying to respect the Flutter a little bit more. I gotta stick a little bit more damage. Look at this rock slide, big damage, huge damage to the Ogre Pond. Puts the Flutter within range for a bunch of stuff. You can icy win. Yes, my Ogre Pond takes, sorry. Yes, my Trakan takes super effective damage there, but I don't get a speed drop. And then whatever mon you KO here, it's usually gonna be the whims here, right? See, 
That's why I did this. I, I threatened flinching both their mons. I got good damage in on both their mons. I didn't have to Terra. I did just in case they wanted to like Horn Leech or Grassy Glide. I did that in case they wanted to pivot in Rilla and Grassy Glide my Tarakion. That's why I did that uh, Grass Terra play there. But now I just come in here and I'm, I'm in a good spot, right? I'm in a really, really good spot. Dazzling Gleam. I think you just still Rock Slide because like I'm not threatened. Um, I'm letting them have the Fluttermane here because I'm still threatening a flinch. They could still pivot it like, either their mons out and go for, like, a Grassy Glide. And I'm saying, if you have it, you should do it, you know? Like, they're going for they're going for Protects. Um, I think they're going to... Are they Spiky Shield in this turn to wait out my uh, terrain? No, they're not. They're just losing their Ogre Pond. They're trying, to, they're trying to game me a little bit. And I'm just saying, no TY, my guy. Ogre Pond takes Dazzling Game Chip. They're seeing what I'm walking into because they didn't see Booster. And, uh, yeah, Ogre Pond goes down. They waste the turn of Tailwind. And at this point, like, they could bring in Rilla, right? I don't necessarily think it's the right play. I think it's very stubborn of them to not pivot out their flutter because like their flutter, right? It would lose its booster, but I still think that was very stubborn because I think they could have like actually just went for like a big grassy glide and then my flutter there. But maybe they thought I would protect. I don't know if they, what they thought my set was. I don't know their life. So anyways, here's the Rillaboom. And anytime you just bring in the Rillaboom like super casual like that, like I think I'm in a good spot because now you've... You've shown your hand. You've shown that you're like, okay, Rillaboom's on the board. We're just pivoting around here now. We're just uh, we're just thinking what we're going to do. I can pivot in this entity. I can stop fake outs. I can stop grassy glides. I don't want my flutter. I think my flutter will get O-code by a, uh, a grassy glide. Oh, do I not switch in anything? Am I just a gamer? No. I'm, this is the right play. <laughs> you want to unlock the flutters. Uh, what reliance on Dazzling Amount will be able to lock in Moonblast a little bit later on in this game. And we're just trying to stick some damage. So here we go. Pivot it on in. Fake out. Not going to work. They were targeting the Trakin anyways. And so this is going to make them think. I think that... I don't know why they would do that. I think they saw that I was cloaked earlier. I mean, they hit my... We got a flinch there. Not that it was really that important. What, did they, what were they going to do? Moonblast, my flutter. Or not Moonblast, a Shadow Ball or something. So we're just going to pivot on back in and out. Pivot on back in and out. I'm thinking... I'm thinking about Swords Dancing here now that I'm looking at this VOD. It'd be a kind of sick play if I Swords Dance, dude. It'd be kind of sick if I Swords Dance. It's the last turn Tailwind. You have Protect. Dude, what a gamer. Am I really that much of a gamer? Dude, no way. Did I, did I really click that? Oh my gosh. Good job, me. You pivot in the Flutter, reading the Protects, reading the Pivot out of the Rilla because they want to regain terrain control, right? Oh yeah, dude, look at that. Oh, look at me. Oh, yes. You ever seen anyone as good as me? Holy moly. Yep, there's the protect. Oh, yeah, buddy. Let's go. This guy's like, yeah, man. I got a free pivot. I waited out the tailwind. I did it. Look at me. And I'm like, I see you. <laughs> I do be seeing you out here. But, I mean, now what do you do here? You know? And I can just go Dazzling Gleam. I think, yeah, it's such a good play. Oh, that's so good. What are you going to do? What are you, you going to do? You pivot out your flutter and go, like, Thunderclap, you know, what, are you going to go for your bolt might have protect, but you're going to lose your flutter there because it protects on clue. And you're, you're guaranteeing either taking like half from your Rilla or you're going to lose your flutter or your bolt here, or I'm going to waste your Terra. And it doesn't cost me anything because you can't, you can't speed drop my flutter while still keeping yours, right? It's, it's such a good play. Oh, that, that Swords Dance completely changed the game. Love Swords Dance. I when I was thinking of moves, you know, I, I've tested... Um, quick attack on that Tarakion for Encore Shenanigans. I've tested um, Upper Hand there. I really like the Swords Dance because it, it makes Tarakion demand an insane amount of like respect and protection. See, they go for a double protect, which is probably their best play there, honestly. Um, I, I just protect with my Tarakion, and I'm just not letting him have Tarakion. Like, Tarakion's my guy. You can't have him. Dazzling Gleam. They can no longer pivot. They take half on their bolt, and now they have to bring out this Rilla... I, win, I won the terrain war. One entity pivot in and the game's over. And now because they went Fairy Terra on their bolt, they cannot like fire Terra their Rilla, right? So that's it, you know? And in this point, this is such a cool turn. I like, I like this. This is so swag what I'm doing here. I don't even need to pivot in the entity. Because remember, Trakian has, they, they've already tried to fake up this Trakian, right? So you, you could fake up me again. You could go for the Miracle Seed. I don't know what your item is. Um, Grassy got into my Flutter, but then you're ignoring the Trakian. I, I win because you can't KO my Trakian and my Flutter this turn. And they know that. They're going for like, a, I think, a Woodhammer play. 
expect anticipating me to pivot in the entity. We just get the double KO. Oh, good stuff. I love it. We're gonna do thunderclap my Trakion. Go nuts. They could have went like they could have went like thunderclap, um, grassy guide into the flutter. But then I just bring an entity or redirection double rock slide. That's easy peasy lemon squeezy. We take those wins, and that's that good stuff. Oh, dude, I remember this game, right? This is a weird, weird team, right? This is a weird one. This is gonna, this is, oh man, I feel so bad for this guy. I'm walking in Wimscott Taraki on here. I'm walking in Wimscott Taraki on. What do you think this guy's doing? What do you think this guy's doing against Wimscott Taraki on? What do you think his out is? This guy sees Wims, Wimscott Taraki on walks into a bar. What does this guy do? His team is broken. Did you know it? You know what I'm about. Here we go. Bully. Dude, I am being a bully. Wimscott Tarakion, big busted. Look at this man. Lost against that team yesterday. That guy? You lost against this guy? Oh man, I feel bad for you, son. This poor little guy. Oh my gosh. I'm looking at this board state and I'm like, there's not a fucking thing this guy can do. There's not a thing. He could go Electroweb and drop my whim speed because I'm cloaked. And then I'd still get the beat up for next turn. And then there's nothing in Sin does that threatens Tarakion. So I was thinking, like, what's he gonna do? Like, Ghost Terror and Sin Explosion? Like, what's the meme here? And I don't, I don't really care. But look at this. Look at this turn. Look at this turn. This is the. He goes for the fake out into the Trakion, bro. And then he goes for the Thunderbolt in the Trakion. So no flinch, because I'm Clover Cloaked. No para, because I'm Clover Cloaked. Plus four galore from the big beat up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And you know what? Tarakion. Tarakion Gaming. Sometimes it's just that simple, you know? Just gotta keep him honest out here. He kept me honest, and it cost him his life. But Rock Slide hits. Dunzo. Dunzo. What do you need to bring in Nine Tails? We can Sunny Day. Bring in Gudra. We got the, uh, we got the good old fashioned Sacred Sword for Gudra. The only thing I didn't get out of that guy that turn was a Terra. <laughs> Imagine if I got the Terra out of him, too. That would have been nuts. But yeah, um, that was a good turn for me. And so the play that I like doing here, we, you're going to see Lando and Gudra, right? The play that I like to do here is when I get in this situation, I'm not afraid of the Gudra setting of Iron Defenses. We have, like, Chi Yu Flutter in the back. Like, we're super fine. Um, I don't know anything about their mons though. So we're trying to, at this point, to not lose to Scarfs, right? Because it could have been Scarf Lando, it could even be Scarf Gudra as a thing, and that's like a 55. Don't want to lose the Scarfs, so we're going to set Tailwind, we're going to protect the Trakion, and we're protecting the Trakion not only to not lose those Scarfs, but we want to see if any of those mons protect, or if any of those mons go with like a weird defensive Terra, next turn we punish. So we're forcing them to reveal their hand first, and then we're punishing after they basically show their one defensive tool that's their last get at a jail free card. So we protect with Trakion. We see the Lando protect. So next turn, we know that we can hit that Lando to guarantee win the game. I would have liked, again, to get a Terra out of them, but it is what it is. And so you see their plan here was to go for protect Lando, hit the Tarakion with the Gudra. And so I'm thinking about this now. Normally, they could throw the 50-50 here of going, like, double protect Lando, or they could protect Gudra this turn. You know, normally Gudras don't carry protect. Um, and the fact that they didn't protect it last turn or Terra still has it last turn makes me think they just don't have that mechanic. So I'm actually just going to still attack the Gudra and then moon blast the Lando. Because the way I'm looking at this is, if you trastalize your Gudra and I don't get the KO, even if you want like Ghost Terra, I have like Flutter and Chiyu in the back, I'm fine. They have to go for the double protect Lando this turn, which is again, that's their get out of jail free card. Um, I'm not letting them have it. And even if we don't KO the land, don't KO the Gudra, uh, like from like a weird defensive Terra or like protect this turn, the fact that Wims does like 30% to Lando means uh, Chiyu should be able to pin it and Flutter should be able to pin it with like a D Gleam or something. So at this point, we didn't even need to do any of that. And we just take those big wins. This was probably the, the coolest like outplay I had all GC. Um, and that was a lot of fun. So this is, I think, the last game that I played today. And like I said, I think I'm in like the upper 15s or low 1600s right now. Um, this guy's like an ice team with Annihilate. And this guy, oh man. Do you guys see what, what he's doing? I just want to say like, what's this guy's lead? What's his lead? Do you know what his lead is? His lead's Trick Room. He wants to go Scarf Annihilate. He wants to go for a Giraffe. He wants to set Trick Room. And, you know, he wants to just, like, close with, like, Glaceon and stuff like that, obviously. It's either that or something Screens. You know what both of those things are? Both of, thing both of those are quite reactive leads. 
I would say they're pretty reactive. Um, and a Nylump is a Pokemon that's very aggressive. Uh, it's a 90 base speed. They usually scarf it. You see, we see the, we see the fridge giraffe and I and I'm sitting here. I'm like, this guy wants to final gambit my entity with his ape. So I can't imprison his trick room. That's like his big brain combo. But the thing about final gambit is it actually requires you to have health to do it. So in this situation, I'm just going to pop the imprison. I go fire, tear, heat wave, easy piece of lemon squeeze. What's going to do? Swap in his glaceon, swap in his bundle. You don't have any pivots for this, bro. Like this heat wave is going to hit way too hard. And if you did the same thing with like Grim, you can't stop the entity either. I guess like you could have led Grim and went prankster imprison my imprison. <laughs> so I can't imprison your trick room. That'd have been sick as fuck. But then you would have been stuck with like a, a Grim far further out board and I still would have won. Um, that being said, that's actually a really cool tech. I might use that sometime soon. Um, we're going Terra here. Even if they want like a water Terra um, or a Terra that would resist this heat wave, as long as I hit the heat wave, I'm going to drop that Annihilate's HP so low that it won't be able to KO my entity with a final gambit. Now I was thinking like, what if like that's just like water Terra ape and he just like has a citrus berry and just like drain punches my chi that would kind of suck but at the same time that would still make me win because i'm just denying trick room here and then i would just bring out flutter and win right we get the imprison up they were obviously final gambit we soaked that pretty well and uh you can't final gambit so you can't trick room me so you lose right that's how it goes i mean he had the anti-imprison tech it just wasn't chi you proof it never is chi you busted chi you busted and this guy's, I remember this guy like big thought. He's like, crap, dude, what do I do now? What do I do now? And he's actually going to bust out the coolest mon. He's busting out the super secret sauce from way back in Sword and Shield. He's busting out the Grim, right? And it's Frisk Grim. It's Frisk. Frisk Grim. Which is not bad in these GCs. I was thinking, like, he has, like, Aurora Veil probably somewhere. Because he has, like, the Abomination Stone. So, like, I understand Frisk Grim, especially in these GCs. And I think it's Orbed. I think it's, like, full attack Orb. People think Grim's, like, a, a wall, like a setter, screen setter. It has, like, 120 base attack. Mon hits, like, a truck. So, I respect this set. I've used it in the past. Um, I still think that, like, you're better off with Prankster. Just so you don't show that you're... Um, you know, not a wall for a closed team sheet, but you know, we're in a fine spot. I think they even go fire terror. Like they have, they have the Chi Yu like defensive capabilities. It's just not gonna, it's not gonna work out for him. <laughs> so Grim's going big Terra. There's the fire, right? Got a fire inside of him. And there it is. And they go for heat wave. I get another double hit. Oh my gosh. First time ever you see me hit four heat waves in a row. Finish off the fire draft, chunk the Grim, and then I was actually really surprised. I think they, they're hitting my Chiyu this turn, right? Because I just went for a Dazzling Glow. I thought I was just going to melt them in the face. I probably should have redirected, but yeah, don't really get anything out of that. And they go Throat Chop, and bro, I eat it at two. My Chiyu has, and they are orbed, yeah. I have like four points in HP and 12 in defense, dude. And they're going, they're working overtime to help us live these Life Orb Grim Calcs. But then they got Glaceon, and I'm just like, bro, dude, not like this thinking what we need to do here. We know we have Flutter in the back to close. And so I think I just follow me this turn in case I miss um, miss on the Grim because I just got to hit the Glaceon and then win the game. So we just go Heat Wave. And uh, I think I hit my last two Heat Waves. I think I hit the last two. Survey says, one, two, three, eyes on me. Heat Wave, yo, Chi, you busted. Sometimes it hits its moves and we take those wins all the way to the bank. So that was my set of games from the second day of Global Challenge 2. Like I said, I played some games when I was on the couch. Um, I played these games uh, at my desktop, and I, I feel like I play so much better when, I, like I said, I don't have to be entertaining and explain all my moves and worried about, worry about getting sniped or worry about who's watching and stuff like that. I know that I personally play a lot better, but I do really, really like this team. This is the restart of the VOD again. But if you guys like these sort of videos where I like break down my thought process a little bit more and like analyze like re uh, my replays a little bit more where I can explain after doing them, let me know. Um, I don't mind recording more tournaments like this. And like I said, I play a lot better when I have the time to think instead of make funny jokes. So yeah, that's pretty much probably going to be it for me for GC. I, like I said, I got like upper 15, low 16s, and that's probably good enough for like the five or 10 points. And that's probably going to be good enough for me. So we take those.